Today we're back in the arms race. Don't worry though, I'm talking about PC components. You would hardly surprise anyone with a 24 core 5 GHz processor anymore. AMD and Intel have actually been competing in the last couple of years, releasing new processors and architectures that are actually good. And game developers are catching up quickly. They implement and optimize to the best of their abilities. So that quite solid machines from two years ago can barely run modern games now. Just you wait another year and they will not even meet the minimal system requirements. Today we will try to figure out how to choose a processor for many years to come, what is the minimum you should aim for and how many cores are optimal for games. This is MK as usual, my name is Mikhail Krashen, today we are talking about choosing a processor for a gaming PC in 2023. And let's start with the biggest limitation. Four cores are no longer fit for gaming. The only exception is the i3-12100 or its slightly overclocked version 13100. There's practically no difference between them. 8 threads, 4 GHz and the current older lake architecture still allow it to stay afloat and yield about 60 frames per second even in CPU heavy games. But you still can see that in Cyberpunk when driving around the city, the CPU load can exceed 80% in Full HD. That is, it hasn't yet reached its limits, but it's almost there. And that's it, no more 4-core options to choose from. It's time to forget about the earlier 4-core solutions on Skylake and Zen. In multiplayer games with large locations, like for example Battlefield 2042, they can't quite catch up with a rather slow RTX 2060. And the once popular i3-10100 often runs at 100% with a terrible frame time and FPS drops to 40. So alas, the era of 4-core CPUs is behind us. I mean sure, they are still able to run not the most CPU-heavy single-player games with processor-dependent settings turned off, such as draw distance, physics processing quality, crown density and the like. But if you are not planning to upgrade your PC in the next couple of years, and being able to plan just anything at all these days is quite a privilege, your choice is a 6-core solution with hyper-threading. So let us figure out what processors those are. And let us start with AMD, which offers 6-core processors with hyper-threading starting from the very first Ryzen 5 1600. The 5-year-old CPU is still capable of running games at about 60 FPS, and most importantly, without freezing and stuttering. Of course, this processor has no reserve for the future, but the M4 platform has an ace up its sleeve, the end-to-end -end support up to Ryzen 5000 series. Therefore, if you want to save as much as possible, you can consider this processor since it costs only about $60 on AliExpress, and in a couple of years should be able to upgrade even to 5800X 3D if you want, which by that time will have a significant price drop. Still, if I were you, I would consider starting with the 6-core Ryzen 5000 series. They have already dropped in price, the 5500 can be found for about 85 to 100 US dollars, while their performance is enough to render more than 100 frames per second in modern games, and the difference with Ryzen 5 1600 can be more than 50%. And what about the first 8 core Ryzen, for example 1700? It can be found on AliExpress for $70. Maybe it's a good idea to pick this one up instead of the newer 6 core solutions and save a buck. Our answer is no. AMD has significantly increased performance by Hertz in Zen 4 and 3, so Ryzen 5500 will be faster in both productivity tasks and games. I mean, you can always play games on Ryzen 1700 without issues, sure. Uh, with the development of DX12 and Vulkan, running games using a dozen threads in parallel is not an issue. But still, the overall slowness of the Zen architecture when compared to newer CPUs will not go unnoticed. And the last question on AM4. Does it make sense to buy 12 or even 16 core Ryzen 9 for games? It's not worth it either. Of course, in productivity tasks, these are performance beasts, often outpacing some not so old server solutions. But still, modern games are mostly designed for consoles with 8 cores and 16 threads. Therefore, you will not have a performance increase if you use 32 threads. The 8 core Ryzen 7 5800X 3D often turns out to be faster than the 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X due to the large L3 cache. So, if you just want to play games comfortably, no need to go for a higher core count. 
One more reason to consider AM4 is processors with powerful integrated Vega graphics that first came out under it. You can choose from 6 and 8 core models. These are Ryzen 5 5600G and 5700G. They're a great option for those of you who are planning to build their PC uh, not at once but over a period of time and still have not got their hands on a decent graphics card. Or for those who need a decent processor while only use their graphics card for mass multiplayer games like Dota. In such case, Vega is a perfect pick. It has no problems in eSports games and it even handles modern projects like Doom. Speaking of M5, everything is even simpler. Here, Ryzen lineup starts with 6 cores, and it is quite possible that we will never see 4 core solutions on this platform. And this makes a lot of sense. M5 boards are expensive, DDR5 memory too, and 4 cores are already a budget segment. Considering that AMD has once again rolled out a breakthrough Zen 4 architecture with clock speeds above 5 GHz, even the formerly low-end Ryzen 5 7600X is already an overkill for games, running at the level of the best solution on AM4, Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. It is very interesting to see how the 7000 series Ryzen with 3D cache will perform. They are to be released somewhere around February to April. On top of that, even the 8-core Ryzen 7 7800X is too much here not to mention the 12 and 16 core models, they are only marginally faster in games. Therefore, if you are building an AM5 computer for games, the baseline 6-core CPU is quite enough. Given the fact that this socket is here to stay for a long time just like AM4 did, in the future you can easily change your CPU to newer solutions without replacing anything else, which has already become AMD's signature feature. And let's move on to Intel. In its case, 6-core processors start with LGA 1151 V2 socket. This is the i7-8700 and there are also 8-core 9700 and 9900. On the one hand, they do not struggle with games, yet. Of course, these are not the ones that you should choose if you're planning to use them with an RTX 4090, but you can still have above 60 FPS in any modern game without problems with these CPUs. But on the other hand, there are two downsides, the price and the upgradeability. Top-end Intel processors, even the old ones, have always been and continue to be expensive. The i7-9700K can be bought for about $200, some seller ask for it up to $300, taking into account the fact that on AliExpress a newer and faster i5-12400F can be purchased one and a half times cheaper while it runs noticeably cooler, there is no point in picking the old Team Blue top-of-the-line CPUs. And another nail in the coffin for this choice is its upgradeability, or lack thereof. The best processor you can get for it is a 16-thread i9-9900K. Hardly anyone will call this processor slow though, it easily runs modern games, but the Skylake architecture on which it is built is more than 6 years old and even in performance tasks, this top-tier CPU turns out to be the same as the mid-tier i5-12400, which is significantly cheaper. All the above makes socket 1151 quite unattractive. And how am I even going to sell my 9700K now? The next Intel socket is LJ1200. Here Team Blue is already actively engaging in a war with Team Red, so even the base level Core i5 has 6 cores with multi-threading. On top of that, they are still quite affordable. An i5-10400F will set you back $100, and a more recent i5-11400F about $130 which is quite at the level of similar 6-core Ryzen 5000. Uh, the situation with gaming is also quite interesting here. Yes, the oldest i5 of course lags behind, but only a bit. But the i5-11400F and Ryzen 5 5600X have parity. And finally, Intel, in pursuit of AMD, finally became generous and even allowed RAM overclocking on big chipsets, which can add another 10% of performance. Speaking of upgradeability, the sensible limit for LGA1200 is an 8-core Core i7-11700. Yes, there's the i9-11900, but in fact, it's just an overclocked version at the cost of huge power consumption. For the Rocket Lake architecture in desktops, wasn't exactly successful. Initially, Intel designed them for 10 nanometer process node, but in the end, they had to go with 14. So an i7 would make a lot more sense here, especially since the difference with i9 in games is only a couple percent. At the same time, the cost of the i7-11700F on AliExpress is about 240 US dollars, and besides, it's quite capable of competing with the Ryzen 7 5800X, which costs the same. So if we focus on games only, the LJ1200 platform is far from dead yet, in terms of both prices and upgradability. But of course, if you need a productivity task machine, here the Intel socket is not so good. AM4 is twice as attractive due to the possible core count that you can get. 
and finally the latest Intel socket at the moment, the LGA1700. Here the situation is close to AM5. The breakthrough architecture and sufficiently high clock speeds lead to the fact that even the 6-core i5-12400F does not look particularly slow compared to the 16-core i9-12900K. And if we take a look at the 13th generation, the difference is inexistent. The 10-core i5-13600K as well as the 24-core i9-13900K both produce impressive results with a couple of hundred frames per second in games. Thus, if you're choosing between LGA1700 and AM5, it's a choice between the price here and now and the upgrades in the future. The Intel's platform is transitional. It supports both DDR4 and DDR5. Considering that even with fast CPUs, the difference between these standards is minimal, this is one good way to save a buck, because quality DDR5 memory is still very expensive. Similarly, taking into account the fact that overclocking the CPU doesn't make much sense, it would be wise to stop at the mid-tier B660 chipset. Quality boards can be found for an adequate price of about $150 US and you'll have RAM overclocking on top of everything. But the once affordable AMD is no longer so. The price of a mid-tier setup with an 8-core Ryzen 7 7700X starts at $800 and you will have to pay about $1200 for the top end 16 core setup. But on the other hand, AMD's significant advantage is much longer support. While there will be no more fast processors for LGA1700 and the 14th generation will require a new socket, the AM5 era has just begun and it is quite possible that this platform will live to see 32 core models on new architectures with a noticeable performance boost. So the choice is all yours to make, buy Intel for cheaper and lack long-term support or overpay for AMD and stay on the same platform for many years to come. So what's the conclusion? The inertia from AMD's multi-core kick has reached hardware engineers, and in 2023 we can safely say that the era of popular 4-core processors is over. Now an adequate minimum is 6 cores. This is the price of technological progress, and even according to Steam statistics, 6 cores have pulled ahead, 33% versus 29 for 4-core CPUs. Moreover, taking into account the 8-core nature of the current consoles and the gradual abandonment of the past gen, it's quite possible that in a couple of years, processors with 8 cores will already be considered mid-tier. This is how progress works, and in any case, I think it's better than the 10-year 4-core stagnation that Intel bestowed upon us some years ago. This was Mikhail Kroshen, my computer channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.